Hello everyone and welcome back to some Dark Souls 3 Focus PvP. Today we are using the Firelink Greatsword and the Storm Curved Sword like I said last time. I also finally got around to finally infusing my little shield with uh, Simple. I bet that clicking is extremely annoying for you guys. Hi. <laughs> I see you have a katana. You know, I really should have just attacked him. Because that was quite rude of him to throw that by mistake. Third swing is always parryable. For the record. Stupid long recovery. Stupid long recovery. Oh my god. That was ridiculous. That was an absolutely ridiculously long recovery. And the lack of tracking. I expected that to be a little bit better at the very least, but wow. Wow. Okay. All right. So, we're starting off with a loss, that's fine. I'm just gonna get a drink super quick. That's better. Ow, my jaw just cracked. That was not pleasant. Far and greatsword, maybe? I can't tell what that is. It's an ultra of some kind or another. Good smash. Oh, I was in range. Damage on this weapon is extremely disappointing, for the record. I mean, my attack rating says it's 540, and I dealt 167 on a one-handed R1. Ouch. Ouch. That. <laughs> that is... Wow. All I have to say about that is just wow. Talk about the attack rating not reflecting the damage output. Wow. Alright, well, this weapon is already leaving me with a poor taste. I remember now why I stopped using it almost immediately after I upgraded it. Yeah, about that. So, on the bright side, at least the Storm Curved Sword will be better. <laughs> Who knows, I might even hit higher damage values with it. Alright, Power Paul. Is this really how we're going to play? Just barely. Just barely. I thought he was going to get away from me on that one. That was really poor stamina management on my part. 
I am honestly very impressed with how good Great Magic Shield is in this game. It turns it into a Great Shield, simple as that. And there's nothing you can do about, against it. Unless you go with a weapon that pierces through shields, which I was considering switching over to this just because it's decent at that. Uh, I don't actually have an upgraded shotel. Wish that I did. That said, the S-Stack does have shield splitter, but that's an S-Stack. I'm not going to be that guy. Not going to be that guy. Not about that life. Alright, you. What do you have? Oh, bad tracking out of 10. Except for that. R2s are good. Ooh, I thought I'd be able to get a roll on that. Yep. Should have expected he would go for the trade. He was in a better health position than I was by a long shot. And he had the timing to get the hyper armor. Ouch. Ouch. This weapon's damage is horribly upsetting, though. 298 on a two-handed R1. Well buffed. Yeah. And people wonder why this thing is uncommon. It's all coming back to me. The flashbacks, the horror of trying to get this thing to work so it could be one of the first five weapon showcases. Ugh. So bad. So, so bad. It's not like I don't even have the stats for it or anything. I mean, yes, it's not fully upgraded. I get that. It's only at plus four. But plus five doesn't make that big of a difference. It really doesn't. It's a cool weapon. I like it. But it's bad, guys. Its damage is just bad. I mean, when I could go to... Oh, you know. Pretty much any upgraded greatsword that I've got and have equivalent attack rating without split damage. Example A, example B, example C, that is split damage, but don't worry about that. Example C, you get the idea. Like, 540 is all well and good, but when I can break 500 and have it be pure physical damage, oh, bleed katanas, cool. Hello, range. That's cool. Oh, not gonna come in on that. The only good thing about the weapon is its art, and it has a lot of hyper armor. It deals decent damage since you actually hit with the sword and the stream of fire that comes out of it. And even still, 575 damage on a weapon art that's that's not good <laughs> I mean yes there are a lot of weapon arts that hit around the same but I've hit like 500 with a longsword with a standard longsword on its weapon art and with weapon arts that are multi-hit spin sweep spin slash those sorts of things combos for days it leaves a lot to be desired overall it's not the greatest weapon in the world All right, Lion, what do you got? but fine. He two-handed. I saw my chance and I took it. He was about to do his lightning charge. Either that or an R2, I couldn't tell which. Either way, it was a bad choice to two-hand because that meant I couldn't easily go in for a running attack. That fight didn't go horribly. 
If the person doesn't have good fire defense, then that helps out a lot. Most armor has good fire defense, though, sadly. Ornstein's, not so much. I mean, even just comparing it to what I've got on. Yeah, its fire defense is higher, but it's nothing overly special. I mean, it's not the worst out there, by any means. It's actually pretty decent. On um, that part, at the very least. But on the rest, it's lower on that helmet than it is on mine. On the gauntlets... Duh. 3.6. 6.8. You know, just because one piece has good defense in a certain thing doesn't mean the rest of the armor does. And that is the case. It's not like it's super ultra fire defensive. I mean, it's a heavier armor, so it's going to be decent compared to what I'm using for the most part. But, hey. It is what it is. So, <sighs> this weapon. And then there's this thing. So far, I'm not overly fond of it. I'm hoping that this session changes my mind, changes my opinion of the weapon. I'm not hopeful based on the way that this start has gone. But some people wanted to see it. Said people aren't really using it. There are some damn good reasons why. Ah yes, Karthus bloody blades. Not putting bleed on them? So yeah, like I said, the only good thing about this weapon is the hyper armor on its R2, or rather L2, because it is stupid. That hyper armor is stupid. I mean, I tanked through what, three hits right there? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and all four of 600 and some odd damage hit. Again, not overly great, not overly special. I mean, to take that much damage and get so little in return. We got a spear and a parrying dagger. Interesting choice. I wanted a rolling attack game. Like that, except I wanted it to actually hit. Aww. Really? Your dodges are on point, sir. Wow, that recovery, though. Ugh, can I please just get the parry? Even that? Oh my god. Death. Wow! His dodges, though. I feel like he's wearing that Karthus ring that improves your dodging ability because there were times in that fight, I swear, he should have gotten hit. That's impressive. That is impressive. Wow. And my parry timing was always just slightly off by just the tiniest smidge. Tiniest, tiniest smidge. That spear is slower than uh, other spears just because it's a pike, technically. It's a pike class weapon, so it's got slightly different timing. Not very different, just, again, a smidge. Something that I uh, need to get used to fighting against. I, honestly, I don't think I've ever fought against more than two of them. 
That said, I'm actually not a fan of the Pike class weapons. The Pike and the Great Lance and the Lothric Knight Long Spear or whatever it's called. I uh, just, I, I don't like them. I'm not fond. But we're going to get one final fight in with this, ha uh, with this hammer, yes. Because this is a hammer now. And then we'll switch over to this axe. Yep. That's the plan. We're going to stick to it. One final hammer fight and then an axe fight. Yeah, totally. Hello, you. So we're going to have a buff on whatever sword you're using. Or are we? got me. I got dead. I had a good little combo on him at the start, but everything went downhill very, very quickly. Oh well. These things happen. These things happen. Now let's switch to a weapon that I actually care about using, and one that actually could be somewhat decent. I don't like that sword. It's okay, it's not the worst thing ever, don't get me wrong. I just don't feel like its damage output is so you know, worthwhile. It's slow, it's a great sword, it's not, you know, slow for its class, but it's it's a slower weapon, and the damage it deals isn't what it should be. Its stagger ability is decent, but on the other hand, its actual ability to combo, eh, I mean, you gotta get them in the hit first. It's got good range, it's got a good long reach to it, it's got that going for it. It's got that in its favor. But again, at the end of the day, the damage output leaves a bit to be desired. Ugh. Great. Just fantastic. Hi. Change of plans. Just because of this guy, we're switching to this weapon instead. Come on down, friend. Or I'll come up. Hey. Hi. Hey. Fight me. This isn't a fight club. Oh. Oh. I see. Are my stats changing? Oh. Classy. Well. I'm out of here. Screw that. I'm done. That's that. We're done. 10 out of 10. On that note, I'm going to end this episode because I want to make sure that he didn't screw up anything in my world. Because when you meet a hacker in this game, they can change your covenant settings. They can change your covenant ranking, is what I mean by that. They can change pretty much a lot. And, you know, for example, I don't know offhand if uh, having 33 vigor means I'm supposed to have that much health or more or less. I don't know that offhand, so I'm going to reset my save, just to be sure, because I am not in the mood to get soft banned. So yeah, sorry for the end of the early episode, sorry for that, but hey, hackers, I'm done. Recording session over. And on that note, so long everybody.
Hope you enjoyed. Next time we will actually do something with three weapons, just to make up for it. But anyway, thanks again everyone, and I'll see you all next time.